Hello, and welcome to NetNanny Mobile for Android. This short video tutorial will give you an overview of the user experience on a mobile device that's running the NetNanny Mobile software. Today I'm going to use a Android tablet that's running Honeycomb 3.2. Uh, this device is a Toshiba tablet. Your experience may be a little bit different depending on the Android device you are using but you'll get a general overview for the look and feel of the application. You can tell that this device is running NetNanny Mobile by looking down in the taskbar you'll notice the NetNanny icon. If I tap on it you will see a message telling you that the device is protected. If I tap on that message I can get some details about the NetNanny Mobile account and the settings that are being applied on this device. I'll tap here on account information and this shows me the family name the username applied to this device and the categories that are allowed and blocked. The categories that are blocked are red, that are allowed are green, and the categories that are warned are in orange. To use the NetNanny mobile browser for surfing the internet, you simply go to your home screen or application drawer. I'll tap here on apps in the corner and select the NetNanny browser icon. You'll notice that this opens a full-featured Mozilla-based mobile web browser. This web browser has all the standard features of typical browsing. You'll notice over here on the left-hand side, I see a 1 in the top corner that represents the tabs. I can open a new tab simply by tapping the little X towards the bottom for new tab. I can also go directly to any website by tapping in the address bar at the top and putting in the name of the site that I want to access. If I want to browse in a full screen experience without seeing the tabs on the left, I simply tap on the tab and drag it to my left. I can also search directly from the address bar in this application. It, so if I tap up at the address bar in the top and say how to install NetNanny and tap enter, the browser will do a Google search. I get the Google results right here and I can tap on any of those to read the results in a web page. Now I'd like to show you the user experience for a block page and how the user can get information about what's being blocked. I'll go up here at the top. We're going to try to just access playboy.com. I know that the categories on this device are blocking pornography. So when I try to go to this website, I obviously get a message that says this website has been blocked. If I tap the little plus sign next to details, it will tell me the name of the URL that's been blocked. And you'll also notice down in the taskbar next to my clock, there's a NetNanny icon with an alert. If I tap that, I see website blocked. If I tap that, I get some options. This is where an administrator could choose to override the block temporarily or change the way that a website is being treated. If I go back to the home page, you'll notice that NetNanny Mobile also blocks other browsers from launching to ensure that you're protected while surfing the internet. I'll tap here on the default browser for Android. You'll see here that I get a message that this browser has been blocked and to please use the NetNanny browser. If I tap the Use NetNanny button, Android will automatically launch the NetNanny browser for me and I'm back to the page where I was before. I can then type in the address of the website I want to visit or select it from my drop down of previously visited sites in my history and go straight to that website. If I want to see all the open tabs in my browser, I tap in the top left hand corner and it shows me all of the available tabs that are open. I select it by tapping it and it goes straight to that web page. Another great feature about NetNanny Mobile is that it will prevent the user from uninstalling or killing the NetNanny Mobile app. Let me show you how that looks. I'll go back to the home page of my Android device. Here I'll tap on settings. You'll notice that NetNanny Mobile prevents me from accessing settings without the administrator username and password. This ensures that a user can't change settings on the device or uninstall the software from the device without being authorized. If I go back to my home screen again and open a general task killer like advanced task killer, 
you'll notice a list of running apps on my device. If I tap the kill selected apps at the top, the app killer closes those open tasks. Because NetNanny has built-in circumvention prevention, you'll notice if I open the task manager again that the NetNanny mobile application is still running. If a user becomes more ambitious and tries to manually kill the app by long tapping on the NetNanny browser and selecting kill, the NetNanny service will restart the application and you will see in the task list that it is still currently running. This is a short overview of the look and feel and user experience of the NetNanny mobile browser on your Android device. Thanks for using NetNanny for Android. NetNanny, complete online peace of mind.